My name is Kristen Holloman Noe. We are in New Hanover County at the North Carolina Aquarium at Fort Fisher. My role is as outreach coordinator. Um, that means that I travel all around the state doing live animal programs for all ages from preschool up to senior communities. Um, and I have been here at our aquarium for seven years. I have been in the aquarium system for nine years. I was formerly at our sister aquarium at Pine Knoll Shores. This is our conservatory space. Um, it has that indoor, outdoor feel. Within the aquarium system, we want to be able to promote um, species survival amongst all different types of animals. Every single animal, every single individual animal of any species is going to have an important role in our greater ecosystem. So we have introduced animals that are not native to North Carolina that are a part of that species survival plan. Um, and a really good example of that are our brand new Asian small clawed otters. Um, and we hope to be a breeding facility for those animals to help encourage that population growth. Within our aquarium, we want visitors here to gain new knowledge and understanding and hopefully appreciation of all the different types of animals so they have a better understanding of the roles that those animals play in the greater ecosystem. I would say um, to the community, there are lots of people who highly value our aquariums. I would even go so far as to say they cherish our aquariums. For me, this is a place where as an environmental educator, I can kind of use that value and I can express my knowledge my experience and have that support of an entity that is already valued. So I could go out into the community, I could say, hey, snakes are amazing. And everyone's like, mm, I don't know. But if I go out and I'm wearing my aquarium shirt, they're like, oh, oh, so you're representing the aquarium. And it's just a different kind of message that way. Um, so I love that association being a part of the aquarium as an educator. On a personal level, this is how I came to create my connections with these animals. So this was my, you know, kickstart into my field. And all through school, I had teachers telling me that I would be a great teacher. And my response was, I see what you do. There is no way. That is not what I want to do. And I started volunteering at our sister aquarium at Pine Knoll Shores. And I had a fantastic mentor. And through her, it was just a, it was my light bulb moment of this is education. And this is an education about what I'm passionate about. I like to say I graduated from the aquariums because so much of what I share with people comes from my experience here. And while I would never, ever, ever say that my education was not important, but this is where I really learned what I'm sharing with the public. So that's a, that's a, you know, a, a very deep level of appreciation for me. Um, this particular facility has an even greater appreciation because my husband and I have been together for, oh my gosh, getting close to 20 years now. This was the first place that we had our travel date to. <laughs> so we have pictures from nearly 20 years ago, just right inside this vestibule um, where we took our first pictures together. So, you know, it's really special to me to be able to come back here later and actually work here. When our visitors come here, we, you know, we're hoping that they have some sort of connection, obviously, but the greatest chance of their connection is with the animals themselves. So those larger messages are going to come through our education programs or through our promotional um, messages that we you know, send out through social media or you know, press releases, things like that. Um, for me, one of the great opportunities to share those messages is in like a community booth setting if there's a festival. Um, so as outreach, we would go and set up a booth and we would have those opportunities to find out what are, what are the important environmental issues in your world. And one of the things that I have found recently um, especially along the Cape Fear River is just water quality um, and then beyond that you know flooding what how do we handle flooding in this area um, and and of course we often get like what is the aquarium doing to assist with flooding issues and you know of course it, we're limited in what we're able to do but our role in that is just education and it's about understanding how our barrier islands our salt marshes all of these places are buffers so we have to protect those spaces in order to, you know, kind of mitigate the effects of these flooding events or hurricanes and things like that. So then our visitors can take that information and they can make decisions on a political level. When they're voting, when they're speaking up in their communities, they're able to say, oh, I learned this through the aquarium and now I can apply it in ways that are going to be beneficial to me and my community. It's opportunities and it's opportunities to grow, to learn, to experience. 
Um, I often like to say that I don't know what I don't know, and I only can experience that and grow in that way when I gain exposure to diverse things, right? Whether it's people or activities or just knowledge topics, right? Um, so I think that to become more diverse and to embrace diversity is to be open to, to learning and gaining those experiences. There are so many different angles here to me. And I think, again, it means diversity and it means opportunity at the same way, but at a cost, right? So there have been many struggles and many um, sacrifices that have been paid to earn me those opportunities. And so to me, there's an awareness of that and being able to not take those opportunities for granted. So I'm very grateful to be an American. I'm very respectful of those struggles and sacrifices that were made before me. And I don't want to take um, those opportunities for granted, for granted. <laughs> but I do want to take advantage of them. You know, like if I have these opportunities and I don't take advantage of them, then I'm never going to grow. And I'm going to just be contributing to the greater problem, which is not understanding. And I think the first thing that we all have to do, like anytime we're looking for change, we're looking for action, it's a choice, right? And so we have to make that choice to first acknowledge that we don't all have the same experiences. Our day-to-day -day experiences, whether we're in the same town, the same county, the same state, they're different. And I, I know that because I lived in a different, very different part of North Carolina for the majority of my life. Um, I was in a very rural area and now I'm in, a, I'm in a more urban area. So I know that those experiences are very different. So we have to choose to acknowledge that first and then we have to listen. We have to listen to other people's stories and their experiences so that we can develop an appreciation for what everyone is doing. And if we're not listening and we're only focusing on what we're experiencing, we're, we're not going to diversify at all. But it is a choice and I think, I think coming to that place where we can activate those choices in our life, we have to have some sort of exposure to gain acknowledgement that we are different, that we are experiencing things differently. So I think, you know, opportunities like this where that's being pointed out is, is very key to helping people to make that choice to listen more.